very much and thank you, uh, Minister, for being here and for bringing forward this important bill. Um, uh, I think it's, it's kind of, uh, as many of us learnt in school, um, it's interesting that we're still debating fair rent and fixity of tenure, which I think is at the heart of this bill uh, in relation to people, and even more so uh, that we still haven't resolved some of the ideals of uh, Michael Davitt, uh, those, those hundreds, uh, those, those many decades ago. Um, I just want to say that I'm disappointed, Minister, that uh, rent deposit uh, protection schemes doesn't feature in the bill. I know that you have some proposals, but it would be useful to have uh, a statement of intent in the bill and our amendments that we'll be tabling reflect that. Deposit retention is one of the primary issues brought to the RTB for dispute resolution. Uh, in 2017, they received 1,234 applications, uh, a rise um, since uh, 2013, where there was uh, 900 uh, 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 disputes of that order. So whilst as a percentage, uh, the deposits uh, disputes are reducing, they're not in quantum terms. So I think that is an important area. And when you think of deposits, the average deposit is now, uh, the average national rent is €1,122. Uh, very often, uh, the landlords are now looking for two months. So that's £2,244. Um, and given that the average industrial wage is 38,000. That's a huge proportion of an ordinary person's uh, 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 capital. So um, I really w would wish you to consider our amendment, which we are tabling tomorrow in relation to that. It's a huge uh, source of disputes for threshold as well. Um, it, 786 queries in 2018. In each of these scenarios, tenants who are highly likely to lose out on securing a new home in the private rented sector for the want of a deposit, the failure to return a deposit can place them at risk of homelessness. It's a huge amount of money for an ordinary person to put together because usually you have a deposit if it's two months and a month uh, in advance. That could amount to three and a half thousand euro. I don't have that kind of money in my bank account and I'm in a good, well-paying job. I don't know many people who are. So, you know, I really think that that should be at the heart of the intent of this bill. The deposit uh, scheme ensures a tenant has greater purchasing power and can be more mobile, choosing to more suitable accommodation and for work. It also helps the landlord uh, because sometimes uh, most of the, most of the deposit uh, disputes are, are ruled in favour of the tenant, but some are ruled in favour of the landlord. And I know that um, my, uh, my niece-in-law's father uh, is a landlord in Scotland, and where, where such a scheme is in place, and he is delighted as a landlord for such a scheme to be in place. And you're talking about large amounts of money uh, accumulating. So if you think of uh, 3,000 uh, 339,000 tenancies, and each of those pen tenancies paying a monthly deposit. That was 380,000 uh, in uh, 380,000 euro, or if you're doubling that to two months deposit, 760,000 uh, euro, uh, an accum accumulated figure. Um, and the, the potential figure, it, um, uh, again to have an idea, it was reported in 2012 that 32 million, which had been paid by the Department of Employment and Social Protection in the form of deposits on, the, on behalf of rent supplement tenants between 2006, um, uh, uh, some, uh, was not returned uh, to the department. It was not known what proportion was kept by tenants and that which was kept by landlords. So please. Uh, I would ask you to look at our amendment tomorrow to introduce a national deposit scheme. I think it is a fundamental piece of, uh, of, of, of security of tenure for tenants, uh, and there are abuses and they are well documented. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Senator.